soft, fluffy, and also satisfying. We love our bread, so much so that each of us consume an average of 13.3 kilograms of it every year. That's almost two slices of bread per person every day. Well, that is a lot of bread, but with so many varieties out there, do you really know which is best for you? If I ask you which is the most healthy bread, which one do you think is the most healthy? Wholemeal bread. Quite a wholemeal, uh, usually. Okay. Which kind of bread do you normally buy? Uh, we either buy uh, brown bread or whole wheat bread. Why do you do that? Uh, we, my family wants to go uh, healthy. Because my wife insists to buy wholemeal. She feels that wholemeal probably is uh, a healthier choice. It's much better for your health. Jacqueline's family loves their bread so much that they go through two loaves every week. Like it? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Like most people, she has also switched to buying wholemeal and multigrain varieties. I've always been looking out for a, for a healthier option for, yeah. my, for my family. The wholemeal bread has uh, added protein mm -hmm. and uh, fiber, it has a higher fiber content compared to the white bread, as well as uh, antioxidants which is good for them. And also I read out somewhere that it's actually, uh, it helps in, uh, boost their, their concentration. Oh! Yes, I actually read somewhere. So I actually encourage them to eat it for breakfast or in between like meals, in between their studies. Yeah, and have you seen any results in that sense? I think uh, in terms of like weight management, mm -hmm. because they have higher fiber content in wholemeal bread. So after eating their bread, they usually don't snack. Yeah, so in terms of weight control, I think it's pretty good. He used to be in the Fit for Life, okay. but he is actually um, off the program right now. When you switched to wholemeal bread, did the rest of the family like that or did they say, Oh, okay, oh, we, we actually bought a few to try out. Um, some of them, some of the wholemeal where they have a rougher texture, right? Um, the children couldn't tolerate it. So mm. I found a soft green wholemeal to right. start, start them off with and they actually accepted it. Okay. Uh, until uh, a certain point where they are, they are they, they got sick of it and then I started switching to something that is a little bit with a rougher texture where it's like the, right. the like purple wheat or the, the oats or the brown okay. rice type of um, wholemeal. Yeah, that was how I actually um, eased them through it. I see. Yes. So Evan, do you like the bread? Yeah. You do? So can you tell me why you prefer eating the wholemeal bread? Uh, because it's tasty and delicious. <laughs> Jacqueline reflects the statistics I got from the Health Promotion Board. In the past five years, the market share of wholemeal bread has increased from 28 to 39 percent. This has got me thinking. Among the healthy varieties, there are wholemeal, soft meal, and multigrain bread. But is wholemeal really the healthiest? I see that fact from fiction. But first, I want to know what goes into making wholemeal bread. So I'm making my way to one of Singapore's largest bakeries. Chef, hello. Hey, hello. Hello, hello. Wow. Bread Talk has come up with a dizzying variety of bread since its launch in the year 2000. And I'm meeting Chef Lin Ming Po. He's been baking bread for the past 30 years and trains the bakers here. He's going to show me why wholemeal bread is healthier than white bread. So this one is a wholemeal? Yes, nutrition value is more higher than white flour. So this wholemeal bread, what is actually in here? It's a whole wheat grain. Without removing the germ and the brain, the outer layer of the, the shell. So it will be more nutrition. Yeah, I feel it's a bit rougher. Yes, but during the recipe, it only contains 30% of the whole 100% of flour used in one recipe. That means after soaking the overnight, we will combination with white flour. Oh, so the wholemeal bread is not only using this no. card, there is still some yes, white flour. Some white flour yes. Same for the multigrain, also uh, still has yes, white flour. Yes, yes. Multigrain is, in fact, it's just the same, it's just add in. Yeah those uh, grain seed like sunflower, pumpkin seed, uh, sesame or oak into the flour itself. Why do you yeah, need the white flour? This is to improve the final product, the texture. It looks more nicer. Oh. Or else, 
people who using 100% of wholemeal, the final product will become a little bit hardened, dry, and the shelf life will be shorter. So whether it's wholemeal or multigrain, white flour can make up about 70% of the recipe. White flour, that could be the reason many are turning to alternative types of bread. It has little nutrients and a high glycemic index, which means it can increase the risk of diabetes. So if there's white flour in wholemeal bread, how healthy is it really? Where does bread stand in terms of uh, what we get in the supermarket? I would think it's under more ultra process. The increasing demand for healthier alternatives to white bread is probably the reason for the price difference. For example, a loaf of white bread costs up to $2.40. Wholemeal bread can go up to $2.70. While multigrain bread can cost up to $3.50. That's almost 50% more than white bread. I discovered that wholemeal and multigrain bread can contain up to 70% white flour. So how much of a healthier alternative is it? I've arranged to meet Melissa Ko. She's a dietitian with the Health Promotion Board. And for the past seven years, she's been trying to get Singaporeans to eat better. I asked her if the presence of white flour in wholemeal and whole grain breads means it's less healthy. Yeah. So it's good so long as you have um, wholemeal flour, you know, somewhere in the third and the fourth ingredient okay. list, yeah, it's still better than just 100% um, white flour. Oh. Another easy way would be to use the Healthy Choice symbol because products or breads that carries that logo right. would contain at least 25% more whole grains. So um, that just helps you at the point of sale you know, to be able to just decide, OK, this one has 25% more whole grains uh, because of the logo. Whole grains um, contains all these nutrients that are good for our body. Yeah. So actually, study shows that by eating more whole grains, it actually protects us from developing chronic diseases in the long term. There's wholemeal, there's yeah. multigrain, there's yeah. multi-wheat, I mean, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think some people think that multigrain bread then definitely is whole wholemeal. Mm. But you do find um, multigrain bread that is made of 100% white flour with just oh. some you know, um, multigrain um, blends on top of it. Yeah, how, how would you find out? Um, one way, first of all, the ingredients are usually listed um, in, the, in order of um, the quantity used. So if you're looking for a solid wholemeal bread, okay. um, wholemeal as an ingredient should be listed as one of the first few in, um, on the list. Secondly, look at the name. So if okay. it's wholemeal, whole grain, anything with the word whole, mm -hmm. um, it would have a wholemeal um, flour. It's made from wholemeal flour. Whole grains option, that's where you can get your barley, your rye, um, buckwheat. So all these are whole grains. So these are definitely much healthier than just your white white bread. So the key is to look for the yeah, whole, whole meal or whole wheat. Yeah, look for the word whole. Yeah. That would be more wholesome. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Melissa says we should learn to look at the labels of the bread we buy. One of the things I look at when I'm uh, picking up a loaf of bread is to look at the calorie count because you know, I'm watching my weight and I figure if I'm watching my weight, then I should be watching my calories too, right? So I checked out the calories of white bread and put them against wholemeal and multigrain breads. This is what I found out. A single serving of normal white bread, which is two slices, has 197 kilocalories. Multigrain bread has 179 kilocalories and wholemeal bread has 167 kilocalories. That's 15% less compared to white bread. Calorie count isn't the only problem with white bread. As I soon find out from Gladys Wong, who has more than 20 years of experience in food and nutrition. 
bread is definitely a processed food because when you look at it, you can tell that it's made of different things put together. Right. right. So there's this thing called ultra processed as well. When it's ultra processed, by definition, are uh, those who has got a lot more other uh, additional ingredients like more sugar, they could have actually more stabilizers or more emulsifiers or other chemicals that will help to extend the shelf life of the bread or could make it even like you say the texture a bit softer. How can I tell whether there are emulsifiers in my food? A lot of these kind of uh, chemicals or shelf life extender type of uh, ingredients are usually in numbering form. So it'll be oh. E with a triple number on it. But where, where, does, where does bread stand in terms of uh, what we get at the supermarket? I would think it's under more ultra processed yeah. because they have a lot more ingredients in it. They've got a lot more additives and uh, emulsifiers or different kind of stabilizers to extend the shelf life of the bread. What other so, foods are ultra processed? So you're looking just... at ultra processed foods will be things like your chocolate. And you're talking about, let's say, fruit juices sometimes as well. Oh. Okay, and also they could be sort of breakfast cereals. Anything that can last very long, you know that it probably has got a lot more um, editors put in it to actually extend the shelf life. So mass-produced bread, whether wholemeal, multigrain or the regular white bread, can be considered ultra-processed food. These are foods which have been through quite substantial industrial processing. Common examples that fall under this category are chocolates, sausages, and even instant noodles. You know, I never thought bread would be in the same category as instant noodles. And that's pretty worrying. And I'm sure a lot of people don't realize that too. So I'm going to do a simple experiment. I'm going to put these three ultra processed foods on the plate here, bring them to the public and ask them which they think is the worst. Which of these do you think is the most unhealthy? Instant noodles. Yeah, instant noodles. Not healthy. Not healthy. Which is the least healthy? I think, uh, the instant noodles, yeah. Yes. Tell me which one you think is the most unhealthy. Yeah. Instant noodles. Okay. Noodles. The noodles. Instant noodles? Yeah. What if I told you that all three of them are in the same ultra processed food category? Kinda of surprised like because I never heard of the term ultra processed food before. Okay. Does that surprise you? Yes, surprise me. Ultra-processed foods contain higher amounts of sugar, salt, saturated fat, and food additives, all of which are associated with an increased risk of chronic diseases. If I want to avoid ultra-processed food in my diet, I need other options. We have uh, spotted wheat, rye, cornmeal, and spelt bread. Okay. And I'm going in search of them now. I've been trying to find out which bread is best for me, given the many varieties sold these days. So far, I've discovered that mass-produced bread could be ultra-processed. That puts it in the same category as instant noodles. But I've also learned that there are other healthier options out there, besides the usual wholemeal varieties. And as a guy who really likes his bread, I'm excited to find out more. Chef Nick is an artisan of a different kind. Since 1995, he's been kneading, pounding, and baking copious amounts of bread here at Nick Vina Artisan Bakery. Today, he's going to show me some of his healthier creations. So, a lot of varieties of bread. Which from the lot here are the most healthy? Spotted wheat. Rye, cornmeal, and spelt bread. And why are these the most healthy among the lot here? Oh, because they use a different type of uh, flour. Uh -huh. We don't mix the, the flour with the white, normal white flour. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sprouted here. Sprouted. And we have rye here. 
Fly bird. Okay. Okay. Let's put it down. This is corn. And this is corn. Okay, you tell me, so this is the, the sprouted wheat sourdough. What kind of flour is it? Uh, we're using a uh, whole wheat flour that you can see. Uh, the wheat germ uh -huh. and the bran is inside. The wheat flour itself that you can see right now, like this, uh, this is sprouted. Uh -huh. So from this, uh, they have a few parts. The bran is on top, the germ is under, underneath. And the middle of the part is uh, endosperm that you see white colors. Okay. That is the endosperm. So normally they use that yes, white stuff? Yes, the white stuff to do all the bread. Whereas this is different because... We're using the whole things. Oh! Yes, so you can see... That's why the, the brown... Yes, the brown things, that they intend to have more fiber. What about rye then? Rye, same things. We, we're using the whole things that you can see. The rye skin is inside. The rye right. wheat, they have a bit darker. Just like our rice, we have a brown rice yeah. and we have a normal rice. This is spelt, okay? Yes, this correct. one which is even has more, I guess. More hutch. Yeah? Yeah. So compared to mass-produced wholemeal bread, these artisanal versions tend to contain more fiber and are far healthier because they are not mixed with white flour to enhance the taste and texture. Rye flour contains four times more fiber and 20% less calories than white flour, while spelt flour has 20% more protein compared to white and is a good source of vitamin B2. And the last one? This is a or corn. Corn meal, which yeah. is it's corn, right? Yes. So that's the little specks. Yes, correct. I this flour see. is much more difficult to get in Singapore. Corn flour has three times more fibre than white flour. It's also a good source of calcium, iron and magnesium and contains vitamins A, B6 and B12. So of all these four different types, basically it's, it's a type of flour that is used to make the bread, right? That's yes, what correct. makes it different. Okay. Normally white loaf, they actually put a, a flavour in yeah. to make it much more flavour. But this kind of uh, bread that you see, different type of flour, they have a different character, different texture and different flavour. But all of it is natural? You yes, don't put natural. in any artificial uh, no, flavouring? No. Okay. We actually ferment it uh, more than 24 hours to actually let the wheat uh, favor slowly, but others best product they actually put it uh, emulsifier, right? Yeah, to actually make the texture, favor, and the color shelf life longest. But we okay. don't we, we don't do that, that. How much do they all cost? It's about uh, six dollars. Oh. Yeah, are people really buying more of these types of bread? Uh, at first start, uh, it's very difficult to sales because uh, normally uh, local they intend to eat the soft bread yeah yeah so when we started we need to educate the customer how okay. to actually eat this bread thank you mm. about six dollars for a loaf of bread like that that's easily three times more than a typical loaf of bread i can get from the shop just downstairs from my house and the thing is, these are not as easy to find as well, and for that price, I don't think I'd eat it every day. But good to know that we have these options. And there's something else I found out doing my research for this episode. This. Keto bun? Now, I know that a keto diet is high in fat, packed with proteins, and low in carbs. but. How do you make bread like that? I've arranged to meet Janti Joso Brazali. In pursuit of a healthier lifestyle, she adopted a keto diet two years ago. And in February this year, she started Seriously Keto. These are keto buns. Why would they be different from your typical bread? These keto buns are very low in its content of carbs. There's only three grams of carbs in this okay. in this whole thing. Compared to a slice of white bread, which uh -huh. has 30 grams. This is only three grams of carbs. Okay, so it's low in carbs. Very low in carbs. But would it be higher in fat? It could be higher in fat because of the almond flour. And also uh, we use eggs in there okay. and psyllium husk. And psyllium husk is a lot of fibers. So this keto bun has 10 times less carbohydrate content compared to white bread. B12 
because it's made from almond flour. And even though it has 8 grams more fat compared to a slice of white bread, Janti says that these are good fats because of the monounsaturated fats and omega-3 fatty acids in almond flour. Let's give it a try. <laughs> okay, I'll see if it tastes just like regular bread. It smells the same. Mm. And it's soft too. Mm. Actually, it's very soft. It's very moist inside. Surprisingly. I'm surprised. I thought it would be a lot drier. And it is quite tasty. And it's gluten-free because we don't use any wheats in there. So there's no sugar in this? There's no sugar in that. The sugar comes from the natural of its uh, almond flours. And that's where the flavour... I can taste yep. the almond as well. I'm looking at the price tag now. To pay almost $9 for two of these buns, that seems really expensive. Yeah, we use everything whole. We use mm -hmm. uh, almond flour. It's more expensive than your regular wheat flour. One kilo of almond flour is about $2-ish versus your regular about 50 cents. So how, how many of these buns would you sell every day? Typical we day? We sell about 60 buns. A about day. 60 buns? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> So, not all breads are created equal. Newer varieties often come with a heftier price tag. But, are they necessarily healthier? I've learned that I need to make more informed decisions, and it helps by reading the side of that loaf of bread to find out what the ingredients are. For now though, I'm pretty sure I'll be switching to the homeo variety.